Hello everybody, this isn't concrete play because I'm not talking about play. I'm going to talk about level editors. Level editors are the heart and soul of most game creation middleware because most games use levels. Most games are built out of levels. If you want to make a game easy to build, you make a level easy to build. And you can see that reflected everywhere. You have scene view in Unity and in UE. You've got map editing in, uh, in, in RPG Maker and Game Maker. Uh, you've got a lot of stuff like that. It's all level editors all the way down. Uh, and in many cases, you can almost think of the rest of the piece of middleware as just supporting the level editor um, because the level is such a focus. Now, with something like uh, Unreal or Unity, you have a wide variety of games, so you can't really make your level editor very precisely targeted. And that means it's annoying for every kind of game, but not so annoying that it turns people off. Something like RPG Maker, they know exactly what sort of game they're creating, so the level editor is extremely fast and precise and easy to use. Great, right? And that's the basic state of affairs as they stand right now. Um, you've got some level editors that are quite generic and therefore bulky and cumbersome, and you've got some that are very precise and therefore limited but fast to use. Uh, except that's not anywhere near what level editors are right now because level editors right now are not level editors. Um, level editors in middleware, you know, if you look up level editor, you're going to find the ones I just mentioned, but those are not the level editors that we are actually innovating today. I think that the level editor people think of most without realizing it is probably Minecraft. When you play Minecraft, you are editing a level. Um, as you run around the Minecraft world building your your new kingdom, you are editing a level. You are creating a level. Um, and that is the strength of Minecraft. Now, there's obviously a lot of constraints on that, and you're powering a lot of other game tips, you know, game, game hooks. Uh, you've got food, and you've got tools, and you've got stuff like that, and monsters. But fundamentally, you're creating levels. And it's the same way with any game. No matter what game you're creating levels for, there are constraints. Normally, you're on the other side of those constraints, though. You're, you're building a level to offer challenges. But in Minecraft, you're building levels primarily to get away from challenges or to prevent challenges or to, you know, overcome challenges. Just because you're coming at it from the other direction, it's the same kind of tool, but you get a very different feel out of it. Uh, the constraints on how you build levels in Minecraft are completely different than how you build levels in, you know, UE or whatever, because it's it's a radically different approach. It's a game-based approach, and you're putting together these levels brick, brick by brick. But before you think that that means it's worse, there are vaster levels created in Minecraft's creative mode than there have ever been created in Unity. Um, and, uh, you know, Minecraft has external editors, and you can create levels in non-Minecraft and then import them into Minecraft. So it's not, the line is extremely blurry. This is not entirely, you know, not all level editing in Minecraft happens in, you know, survival mode Minecraft. People like to express themselves, and they'll be happy to do that using more complicated tools or creative mode or whatever, but they're still fundamentally playing Minecraft even when they're just dedicated to editing levels. And I think that's really interesting. I also think that Minecraft is a really terrible level editor. Um, nothing against Minecraft, it's just not built to be a good level editor. And that uh, leads to a lot of the annoyances that you have when you try and take Minecraft to the next level. Uh, for example, if you wanted to create a ship that can fly in Minecraft, it's quite difficult, uh, and it involves mods. If you wanted to make a computer, it takes up acres and acres of, of terrain, or, again, mods. We can talk about mods. We're going to talk about mods, but that's not what I'd like to focus on right now. I'd like to focus on another very important level editor that isn't, of course, part of a standard piece of game development middleware. We're going to talk about Mario Maker. Now, if you're not a, if you're not fortunate enough to own a Wii U, uh, Mario Maker is a game where you build Mario levels and then let the world play them, uh, or play Mario levels that the world has built. If you look up YouTubers online, you'll find that they're all playing Mario levels, but very few of them show you how they put Mario levels together and what editing the game is like. Let me tell you, Mario Maker is really interesting. And there's a lot of things that you can learn from it because there are a lot of pieces to Mario Maker that are more powerful and more interesting than are in any piece of present-day middleware. Um, and I'd like to discuss the two big ones. 
Uh, one is permutation. And two is nesting. So what am I talking about? Well, permutation happens because although you have a bunch of basic bricks and tools and monsters and stuff, uh, they behave differently depending on what you do and how you put them down and what you want them to be. So you don't just have a giant drop down of every potential block that you could ever want to place, you know, space engineers style. Instead, you have, you know, a a piece of uh, of, of pathing, and when you shake it it turns into a different shape that accomplishes the same basic idea. Uh, similarly, you can switch between pieces of pathing quite quickly. You don't have to keep selecting different, um, different blocks from a giant drop-down list. And this is important because it makes it super, super straightforward and easy to use these paths. Uh, obviously, you could improve it even faster if it was some kind of algorithmic uh, automatic completion system where you know it would automatically connect up and that sort of stuff but uh, it depends on what you need either way this doesn't just stop at paths if you shake bricks you get different kinds of bricks if you shake monsters you get different kinds of monsters if you shake power-ups you get different kinds of power-ups um, the idea here is that all of these bricks are actually permutations and you can rapidly switch between the a fair number of permutations um, this allows you access to a wider variety of tools without actually needing to continually go back to a giant list and get lost. So, as an example of a giant list and get lost, let's talk about building a ship in Space Engineers. When you are putting together a ship in Space Engineers, you have to continually select different shapes of bricks if you want to create any kind of rounded or, um, or, or slanted shapes. And that's a real pain in the butt. And uh, I think that everyone who's played Space Engineers is familiar with, okay, I've got to get a this kind of brick now. Rotate, rotate, dang it, that's the wrong direction. Rotate, rotate. Imagine if when you were building something in Space Engineers uh, and you selected your square brick and you were trying to put, uh, you know, a, a, let's say we're trying to put a slant right here, right? So you put your square brick icon here and then you just shake it or hit a button and it automatically permutates. It looks at what the surfaces are nearby and it decides that what you'd like is this. And if that's not what you'd like, you can still fall back on you know, shaking it again to get a different shape or rotating it using the rotate keys or whatever. But the point is you wouldn't have to continually switch. You would just be able to permutate. You'd be able to switch between the bricks without actually having to call up a different set of tools. Now, most people that, that edit Space Engineer's ships, they just have uh, one of their icon, one of their inventory spaces, dedicated to every possible permutation of brick. And that's a huge waste. That if, if, if you know that someone's going to have to dedicate an entire block of inventory just to have all the varieties of brick, you should find a different dedicated way to give them all the varieties of brick. Similarly, there are a lot of other things that could benefit from permutation in something like Space Engineers. For example, engines. Uh, right now, you know, you've got a small engine. Well, what if you could shake the small engine and it would turn into a different shaped small engine that might suit your needs better? Or maybe it turns into a double length small engine, or maybe it turns into a large engine. There are a lot of options, but they're all better than not being able to change it. They're all better than having 85 different engine bricks. Of course, there are already games that do this. Um, for example, in Medieval Engineers, which is made by the same company, uh, you have the bricks which have permutations, and you can switch between permutations. So, for example, you might have a corner piece that has uh, you know, a door here, uh, and then you can switch permutations, and now it's got a door over here, and now it's got two doors, and then it's got like a door here. So there are options to... Um, uh, to permutate already showing up in these games. And I think it's important that we understand that that is probably going to be the future. Uh, the idea of being able to access, you know, a bevy of bricks as a single brick, a bevy of items as a single item. And right now it's sticking to games. But imagine if you were playing in Unity and you were trying to build a level. Uh, no, no, let's, let's make it simpler. Let's make it RPG Maker. So you're an RPG maker and you're trying to put down a chest. Right now, in order to put down a chest, they've simplified it a lot. You're allowed to do a fast 
uh, a fast tool that helps you put down chests. So it'll ask you uh, what chest you want to put down, what you want to be in it. Um, and then, of course, later on, you can go in and edit that code because it results in actual code that you can change. But imagine if instead you had a chest item that you could drag out onto the map uh, or, you know, it was just a part of your paint and, you know, it just stuck to your cursor, right? And then instead of trying to figure out all of that stuff via a pop-up menu, uh, you could first off switch between types of chests easily just by changing the visual. Maybe shaking it is probably a little silly. That's that's a little bit um, Mario Maker specific. But what if there was a key or you could use your mouse wheel to switch between it, right? Put the chest down. Great. Now just drag in an item from your list of items and drop it on the chest. Why in the world do you have to specify it via a drop-down menu? You've already got a drop-down menu for items. And what's best about this is that the item doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be limited to a specific item either. You can grab a specific item off of it, but it's actually going to be n different items, and you can use the mouse wheel to change them. So now you've gone from having a drop-down list of every possible kind of chest and a drop-down list of every item in the universe to having a single item and a mouse wheel plus a single item and a mouse wheel. And this is also more flexible because you can then just add in more items. You don't have to edit the code if you want to make it multiple items. Uh, and I think that this is a really easy way to take something which currently involves a large number of drop-downs and make it something that feels fast and easy. Now RPG Maker is easy as an example, but uh, it's not as powerful as an example as it might be because you don't generally put down a whole lot of chests. Uh, it's not like when you're creating enemies in Mario or something like that. But you could easily use this to create enemies and such in, in, in RPG Maker. Imagine just dragging enemies onto the field rather than trying to create um, you know, enemy encounters and then trying to balance them and stuff like that. You could just drag them together, drop them on top of each other, shake them, or use your mouse wheel to change which version of the enemy you're using. There's a lot of potential here to make it a lot easier and more fluid to build your RPG level. You can't do this for everything. Uh, you are still going to have to fall back on code because you've got stuff like, oh, you know, someone is, needs to say something, so you're going to need to enter dialogue or whatever. Um, and obviously there are times when this kind of situation isn't ideal and you want to go back into the chest and uh, maybe change it so that it says something different or uses a different uh, sound effect or whatever. But the basic idea here is pretty straightforward. You want to make every item more than one item and you want to make it so that you don't have giant lists. You want to limit the list and then have it be basically two-dimensional uh, so that you've got, you know, n different categories of enemy and then n enemies within each category rather than having to pick from 300 different enemies. Now I kept this pretty simple because RPG Maker has a lot of complexities that would go easier if we had something like this. For example, the battle system, um, uh, skills even, but RPG Maker also is very precise and very fluent at RPG making. Um, improving RPG Maker is uh, pretty minuscule. It's a very, it's a very gradual improvement. Even if I were to polish the hell out of how you put items on the screen or how you put enemies on the screen, it wouldn't be that much better than it is now because it's already very good at creating old school Japanese RPGs. But this kind of thing in Unity, for example, so you've got Unity and you're building your world. What if when you downloaded packs, you could get, you know, a, a, a module pack, a car. Let's say you're putting a car in the universe. As it stands now, if you wanted a different kind of car, you'd have to go down and select a different car and drag it in. Uh, if you want the car to do something, you've got to uh, edit it or put a new piece of code in it or whatever. Uh, but imagine if you had the ability to select a car as a pack item. And then you had the ability to use, say, the mouse wheel to switch between car variants very, very rapidly. And that could mean that you switch over to a different kind of car. Or it could mean that you switch between damage modes. You know, you've got a different different damage level. Uh, and I know that uh, when I was putting together cars uh, for one of my prototypes, uh, I would have to manually delete or rotate 
every single thing on the car to get a good damaged looking car. Imagine if every time you shook your mouse, the car took damage in a random way and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You could just keep shaking it until it was roughly correct. Um, and that would allow you to quickly put down damaged elements. Uh, similarly, the idea of painting a lot of things, um, there are a lot of options to randomize the, the things that go down if you have these options. If you wanted to paint a whole field of cars, right now you have to place each car and damage each car individually, but imagine if you could just pull up a brush of 50 cars, and then every time you shake it, all 50 cars take a different random kind of damage. It's not that hard to build, but because it's not supported intrinsically, nobody builds it. If it was already understood that this was part of how Unity works, everyone would do this, but it's not. Um, and so no one does it. Everyone just uploads their assets and that's that. And this is basically like the uh, the smart tile that, uh, uh, that RPG Maker uses. It's a piece of smart content that can determine... Uh, based on your basic actions, what kind of content variant you want to put down. However, all of this talk is only half of what I wanted to cover because the other one is nested objects. Now, I already mentioned this briefly with the idea that you could put stuff inside of the treasure chest just by dragging it on. But this is the same basic thing that happens in, in Mario Maker. You, you put down a little cloud, and this cloud will float around, right? It's actually not a cloud when you get it. When you get it, it's some guy with a a spiky, spiky ball, but when you shake it, he falls off and you have a cloud. Variants again. Um, and then you put on your bullet bill stand like this. And it goes, oh, you have now nested a bullet bill into a cloud. That means that the bullet bill will fly along with the cloud. And then you say, okay, cool. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put turtles inside the bullet bill. And now it's going to fire turtles instead of the bullets. Um, okay. That works too. Once again, you've just nested it. And this is something that works very, very easily in Mario Maker, but it's something that doesn't really happen in a lot of other environments. Uh, if you try and nest things by dropping them onto each other in Scene, View, and Unity, it'll just create two things. Uh, it's the same with virtually every other kind of game. Uh, game. Sorry, every other kind of editor. And that's really a shame, because the idea of nested behaviors is incredibly powerful and expansive, and you can do so much with it. It's, uh, it's just something that we really should think about including a lot more in our own editing environments and even in how we build our games because this is something that has a lot of merit to a, to, 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 to a player. If you can drop stuff in stuff and it does stuff, that's great, that's cool because you can then put in a mod which does different stuff when you drop different stuff. Uh, as an example of how to do this poorly, we can go back to Minecraft which has treasure chests uh, and you just drop stuff in them and they go away forever. It has ejectors, right? Um, but when you drop stuff into the ejector, it just comes out as a sprite. Uh, it doesn't, like, emerge as a finished block or anything. So you can't do a whole lot with it. If you put something interesting in there, it's just going to come out as a 2D sprite. You're going to walk over and pick it up. Uh, so it has a very limited functionality. I think the only things that actually come out properly are arrows and snowballs. Um, so that's just not not good enough. Uh, similarly, if you have a train car and you try and put something on the train car, uh, it'll just be inside of a box on the train car rather than actually being uh, an element of the train car. Big part of this is because Minecraft is actually really crap at physics. So, excuse me, so they can't really nest things very easily. It'll crash their simulation. But imagine how nice it would be to be able to just stick things together. So, for example, you, you can build golems in Minecraft these days. Uh, imagine if when you build a golem, you could just stick stuff onto his hand and he'd have an axe or whatever you put in his hand. You don't like it being an axe? How about he has, uh, uh, you know, one of those box emitters? Except for the box emitter doesn't just emit whatever in, in flat tiles. It emits... Uh, you know, redstone dust or something, and then that'll paint a lot of, uh, of redstone dust around the area, and then you can, you know, whatever else. There's a lot of potential options for nesting these things together. You've got a golem which follows specific behaviors. You've got uh, an item on his arm which follows specific behaviors, and maybe the item on his arm has stuff inside of it which follows specific behaviors. And in this nesting, you can get an unlimited kind of variety because I've given you examples of what the golem does 
with, say, redstone in there. But what if you have a mod that allows you to put, say, rocket fuel in here, and now the golem fires at a giant burst of flame? The guy who made the rocket fuel mod doesn't have to understand that this is on a golem. He just has to understand that, you know, when, when it's inside something, rocket fuel com comes out when it's released. And later on, if you put it in a chest, then whenever anyone opens a chest, rocket fuel goes off. Cool, right? Uh, and the only way to prevent that is to put in a special modded container that can contain rocket fuel. Um, and I think that's great. That's a cool idea to me. You have a mod which adds something in that takes advantage of nesting. Now, Mario Maker, nesting is hugely important um, because so many of the things in Mario depend on being nested. Uh, bricks with stuff inside of them. Mario has a, a costume on. Uh, enemies frequently have multiple layers. Uh, there's a lot of things that are nested inside of other things in Mario. But that's true of most games, and especially these days with your crafting-based games or your level-building games. Um, nesting is a super powerful tool, and it's a really, really easy way to make mods extremely powerful. Mods are, to me, the lifeblood of most modern games. Uh, I will play games that have mods for thousands of hours, um, while I, even a good game that doesn't have a mod, I don't think I'll play it for more than 20. So that is something that I seriously consider to be of the utmost importance, and the biggest and easiest way to allow mods to do amazing things is to allow items to nest with a kind of open-mindedness and uh, allow you to put any item inside of another item that makes some kind of sense. Even if it's super loose and doesn't make any sense when you actually look at it, it's okay. Um, you can trust the player to put stuff inside of stuff and have fun with it. You don't have to worry about the fact that maybe putting rocket fuel inside of a treasure chest doesn't make that much sense. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Let them do it because it has uh, an outcome that makes sense in the game world, and it has an outcome that is useful in certain kinds of level designs. And the things that become useful are almost unimaginable. Uh, it is almost impossible to think of what might be useful in the future. Um, for example, the rocket fuel. I mean, I've created this rocket fuel mod, guys, and all it does is add rocket fuel into the game, which is something that explodes violently whenever you you know release it into the air. Uh, I don't know what anyone's going to use it for, but I, I put it in, I put it in that, that dispenser box and just fire fireballs all day. Oh, cool. Well, I'm going to put it in a treasure chest and create a mega bomb trap for anyone who invades my treasure chest. Well, you know, guys, I created a mod that, uh, that has a, uh, a bow in it and the bow actually can fire more than arrows. It can fire whatever you want to put inside of it. So now it's firing rocket fuel. Oh, well, I created a ship that can go into space and I'm going to use a rocket fuel as a component that's required to make it fly. Uh, oh, I've created a sun out of rocket fuel. Oh, I've created a golem made out of rocket fuel. You have no idea what they're going to do with it. And uh, it's really easy to make mods fit together by simply allowing things to be triggered by other things, allowing things to nest inside of things. It's really hard to make mods cool by allowing them access to the fundamental nature of your universe. So why not do it the easy way? Allow them to nest. Anyway, those are the two things I wanted to mention, and I don't know how clear I've been, but basically I like the idea of changing our giant lists of items into two-dimensional lists perhaps with algorithmic content over here. And I like the idea of allowing us to put things inside of things inside of things. Uh, both of these support modded content extremely well. Both of them support, you know, content that you might download from an asset store extremely well. Um, there's a lot of, of details that you'd want to work out depending on the kinds of games you were creating. But I can't help but think that these would be better tools, both for players and for devs, uh, than the lack of them. <laughs> they both seem very powerful. Let me know what you think below. Bye. Oh, that's not F12. F12.